Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. I have a whole bunch of Profit 5 repair and restoration videos, but I don't think I've ever shown the calibration or the calibration verification process. So in this video, I'm going to show you that today. The Profit 5 does a really good job of keeping its oscillators in tune under control of the CPU. So we rarely find problems with the oscillator calibration, but we'll go through the verification process of that first, starting with oscillator A. So to verify oscillator A, I've got a sawtooth wave and only oscillator A turned up in the mix. And starting down here, here it's just kind of clicks, so you can't really tell, but starting here, I'll make sure five notes are in tune because basically uh, each, five, each of the five keys I press get assigned to different voices, so different oscillator chips are what we're hearing. Then I'll go up an octave. So it sounds pretty good. Then I'll crank the frequency knob here from zero to ten, which adds a uh, four octave offset. So it seems like oscillator A is in tune and scaling properly for all five voices. A good way to verify that is to put it in unison. And none of the voices are standing out there. So again, that's another way to confirm that they are all in tune and scaling correctly. So another part of the verification procedure is to make sure that this frequency knob works correctly. So 0 to 10 is a 4 octave offset, and it takes quantized steps of uh, one semitone each. So if we hit C... So it took steps and semitones uh, up four octaves, and so this is working correctly. So the next thing we're going to verify is that the sync function works. So we'll turn on sync, and we'll turn on keyboard for oscillator B. definitely works. So now we're going to verify the pulse wave and the pulse width setting. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing all five voices separately and we're going to adjust the pulse width and make sure that the pulse width kind of adjusts similarly and the, the sound decays at roughly the same point towards either extreme. So towards the middle five we get a square wave. And start adjusting the pulse width towards each extreme. Back to the middle. And in the other direction. So that sounds pretty consistent from voice to voice, so that looks good, and we can move on to oscillator B. So for oscillator B, we're going to do the same thing that we did for oscillator A. We're going to make sure that each of the five voices oscillators are in tune and that they're scaling properly over the full range of the keyboard. Again, because we can't really hear what's going on here, we're going to start here. up four octaves.
and it is in tune and scaling over the full range for all five voices. So that's good. We'll throw it into unison mode and uh, confirm this, that no voice stands out. <laughs> Now we're going to make sure that this frequency knob works over the full range. So again, uh, here, here's a C, and we're going to go up in, in semitone steps, up four octaves. towards uh, two octaves up C, and what we're going to do is we're going to verify the fine tune knob now. The oscillator B has a fine tune knob that lets you detune this uh, between 0 and 10, and, and basically this sets it in between one semitone. So uh, if we start here at C, this, uh, when it goes up to 10, should bring us up to C sharp. good. So now we're going to verify some of the other sounds. So we have the uh, triangle wave on oscillator B, which we don't have on oscillator A. That sounds consistent between the five voices. Uh, take it off of unison here. Now it sounds consistent between the five voices. Uh, we'll put it on pulse wave, and we're going to do the same pulse width test that we did with oscillator A, just to make sure that each five, each of the five voices decays at a similar point. And back to the middle. So those sounded really consistent from voice to voice. So now that we know that oscillator B is in tune over the audible range, we can test the low frequency uh, function of it. So we'll put it back in the sawtooth here, and we'll turn on LFO. I'm going to crank frequency up to 10. And since I have keyboard tracking turned on, probably in this higher range, I should get a uh, key-dependent LFO. <laughs> Now this isn't in tune, but this goes up to about 40 hertz or so. Should be 40 hertz. Looks like it goes up to about 45 hertz or so, and then it goes down into uh, clicks. If you take off keyboard tracking, then there is going to be some variation from key to key, but Basically, to adjust the LFO speed, you'll use the frequency knob here. And you can actually get it very slow, uh, down to 0.1 hertz, which is very, very slow. So now we know oscillator B works and doesn't require any calibration. It's very rare that you'll need to calibrate any of the oscillators. Again, the CPU does a great job of compensating uh, for, for any offsets that need to be applied to any of the oscillators. So if you need to make adjustments to your oscillators, then possibly something is wrong. So the next test is for the mixer section. So I've got oscillator A and oscillator B turned on, but I have them turned down in the mix. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be slowly raising the volume for oscillator A and oscillator B, and just making sure that each of the five voices is in relative balance, so the volume is, is roughly the same as we raise the volume in the mixer. So right now it's off, so you don't hear anything. So that sounds pretty consistent voice to voice. Now we'll do oscillator B. consistent. Now we'll do the noise. And 
and that's good. So we can move on to the next section, which is unison and glide. So for the unison glide and actually pitch wheel test, uh, it has you set the keyboard into normal playing range which it tells you the frequency knob for each oscillator is at 4. It's actually a little bit above 4 and what you can do is you can throw on a 440 and then uh, and then get these dialed in with that uh, pretty easily. So we're going to test the pitch wheel now and basically what we're looking for is we're looking for oscillator A and B to track since they're in tune now and we're looking for the pitch wheel to go um, a, a proper amount of a offset, so about a fifth. And it looks good. So the next thing we're going to test is unison and glide, so we'll turn unison on. So we have no glide. Turn glide up to about five or six. We get about a one second. Now we're going to turn glide all the way up to ten, and we're going to listen for basically none of the voices are going to get too far out of whack, and it's going to take a really long time, like at least they say five seconds. I think it's going to be more like ten seconds for it to get all the way down. that there's no detuning of any oscillators when we tweak the glide. And that's, that's good. So we can move on to the next thing, which is filters. So now we're entering the point where the Prophet 5 is going to need the most help with its calibration. I mentioned the oscillators, uh, they're tuned by the CPU and the CPU does a great job of that. Well, the CPU doesn't even look at the filters, so everything with the filters has to be calibrated through the trimmers and invariably they're not going to be calibrated properly. Uh, and to show that, I'm going to show you these filters as they stand right now. So we've got uh, every oscillator and noise turned off in the mixer, we've got the resonance cranked up all the way and I set the cutoff frequency about mid-range. So what we should be hearing, I have keyboard tracking of the filter on, we should be hearing semitone steps as we go up, but what we actually hear is the filters are way out of tune and not scaling correctly between voices so it just sounds like random garbage. So we're going to have to calibrate the filters so we're going to need to calibrate the filter envelopes as well because when I press a note here and I tweak this envelope amount from 0 to 10, it really shouldn't detune this note. That one is not bad. So you can see they're like widely inconsistent and even going in opposite directions between voice to voice. Again, to show you how bad things are, I put it in unison. That's pretty bad. So to get ready for this calibration, we have to adjust the filter cutoff frequency. Uh, so this test point in here, filter control voltage, reads 2 volts. So I've clipped my multimeter's ground to the uh, little ground lug here and the red lead to the filter CV test point. And I'm going to adjust the frequency, uh, the, uh, frequency cutoff for the filter up until I can get it as close to 2 volts as possible. And uh, because it takes quantized steps, it looks like that's the closest I'm going to get to it. So before I block things with my arm, when I start making adjustments, I wanted to show you the setup here. Uh, I do it a little bit differently than the uh, service manual. The service manual has you using um, two probes of your oscilloscope and visually comparing the waveform with the A440 reference. 
generated by the CPU. Uh, modern oscilloscope has a frequency counter built in, so uh, that visual comparison between the A440 reference is not necessary. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've uh, clipped our probe onto the test point that it it says uh, it gives you tells you to the left or to the right of a certain resistor for each of the uh, five voices so right now we're looking at voice one we're clipped onto the right of that resistor and then there's a couple trimmers that we're going to adjust for the initial frequency and the uh, volts per octave uh, for the filter so this one here uh, right beneath it, F1 off, frequent, uh, filter 1 offset. This is basically your initial frequency trimmer for the filter. So right now I've hit A440 and it's, uh, it's showing 487 hertz. So that's going to need an adjustment. And then when we're done with that, we're going to hit uh, 1 octave up and we may need to adjust the volts per octave or the filter scaling is what they call it and that, I'll pull back, is located all the way over here so these five trimmers here are for the filter scaling and as you can see they've got that goop in them so they've been sealed from the factory the only one that was uh, looks like it's ever been touched is uh, filter four so first thing I try to get some of that sticky garbage off of the trimmers uh, that, that kind of seals it in place from the factory so I can make some adjustments and uh, I hit again this is a A440 and you can hear right now none of the five voices are tuned I have them in unison so for sure it'll assign that note to the voice that we're calibrating so I'm not doing anything by ear I'm gonna have to rely completely on the frequency counter of the scope um, or you can compare it to the A440 reference from the CPU with an additional probe here. Uh, so I hit A440 here and once it's locked in there's no need to keep pressing it down and hearing it audibly since we're not going by by ear here. So I'm going to adjust the initial frequency here to get this as close to A440 as possible. Uh, I'm going to have to go down here and use the, well, I have two frequency counters on this scope. The measurement tool and the built-in frequency counter. So, that's pretty good. 440.3. Uh, the service manual says that the oscillators are not temperature compensated, or sorry, the filters aren't temperature compensated, and that they can go out of tune within minutes of uh, turning on the keyboard, which is which is great, but we're going to get it in as t a good a tune as possible right now. So now I'm going to go up to uh, one octave, so I'm going to hit the higher A, and uh, it's showing 875 hertz, which is pretty good. I'm going to see if I can get it without totally messing things up, if I can get it just a little bit improved because this is going to affect the scaling of the filter so if there's a little error on one octave that error is going to build as you scale up so there's uh, 879.7 Hertz let's go back down to a, a 440 and we're still right on the nose 440.08 Hertz so I'm going to repeat this now for all five voices and when we're done, that unison noise that we hear should be in tune and scaling. So now that we calibrated all five voices, and, and the filters were horribly out of tune. The, the uh, A440 on uh, some voices was as low as 400 hertz and as high as 500 hertz. So when we had it in unison before we calibrated it, it sounded awful. This is what it sounds like now with all five voices in unison. take it out of unison much better than it sounded before so while we've got this in the service position since we know the filter envelope uh, trimmers need to be adjusted we're going to adjust those as well so I've dialed up the patch used to calibrate the filter envelopes so the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to again adjust the filter cutoff frequency knob 
Uh, this with this particular patch, it has the filter all the way open, so it has the control voltage nearly at 10 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this down now to 5.75 volts. So lowering the cutoff frequency and that's probably as close as we're going to get it. If it's taking steps like that, uh, we're going to overshoot it if we bring it down one more notch. So now we've got our test patch properly dialed in and we can adjust those offsets. So I'll show you what I'm up to here. So I've moved my ground lead from my multimeter over to ground here on, on the analog board, board 4. Uh, you always want to be clipped to the ground as close as possible to where you're measuring. Uh, looks like I'm sitting on something there. So now I will be clipping on the right end of different resistors going down this row and we'll be adjusting trimmers here. They're kind of in pairs. We're going to be adjusting these uh, ones with the terminals facing up. And what we're going to be doing is we have the uh, filter envelope turned down to zero and we're going to remember this value negative 186 millivolts and then what we do is we turn the envelope amount up and you can see here it changed by a little bit uh, not, not a ton uh, and we're going to adjust the trimmer so we get the reading to match what we saw initially so um, I'll do a couple and when I find one that's really bad I'll show you and we'll adjust it together all right, let's do this one together. This is voice two. So with envelope amount of zero, we're at negative 178 millivolts. And if we turn the envelope up, we drop down to negative 810 millivolts. So we were, again, 178. So that's where we're going to shoot to get it. And with these trimmers, it's not possible to get things exactly correct, but we'll get it with, you know, maybe 10, 20 millivolts. See, I barely moved it and it jumped quite a bit. And and there we go. That's that's as good as we're going to get it. I'll show you. We'll go back down to zero. That's not bad. That's a lot better than what it was. And, uh, you know, subtle differences like this do attribute to variations between voices, but that, again, is one of the things that are endearing about analog synthesizers as opposed to digital synthesizers. So I'm going to continue running through the voices and do this for all five. The next one happens to be our voice that was off in the opposite direction. You remember when we turned the envelope amount knob, some voices went up in pitch, some voices went down in pitch. With the last one, when we turn the knob, the voltage dropped to a lower negative number. With this one, we're going up into the positive region. So that explains the differences in behavior for those voices. So now with those filters calibrated, that sounds a lot better than it did before. And in unison, don't really hear any of the voices standing out over the other ones. So now that we verify that the filters are in tune and tracking, we'll go and check that envelope amount again. If you remember, when I pressed a, a note, that would really detune the note one way or another. one voice that's uh, a little off, but it's the best that we can do with the trimmers that are there. So we've been listening to it with a resonance of 10. So all five voices are kicked into self-oscillation. And what we're going to do now is we're going to gradually lower the resonance value until they stop oscillating, self-oscillating. And according to the service manual, probably by the time we get down to seven, they'll all be quiet and they may drop out within one and a half notches difference of each other. So they're not necessarily going to drop out at the same time. So 10. There, one is gone and we're at eight. And they're all gone at seven. So they're dropping out within one notch of each other and they're dropping out at the correct point of the resonance adjustment. So that's all good. 
And again, these differences create that subtle difference from voice to voice, which gives the analog synthesizer the warmth that you've come to expect and appreciate. So now we're going to quickly verify the filter envelopes. So I turn the envelope amount up, and with no attack, and with a little bit of attack, So that was good, and now we'll check decay. Well, that's awfully long. Good thing I didn't set it to 10. shorter. All right, so decay is working. Now we'll do sustain. So uh, right now we have zero sustain. And you see as we adjust the sustain, it raises the frequency kind of consistently as we go up and down. We can verify this for each of the voices. So sustain is good. So now we'll test filter release. So I'm going to turn release up to about six. I've got release turned on here. And that can get annoying, so you just turn release off to get it to stop droning. If we turn release up all the way, Apparently the uh, release should exceed 20 seconds at this setting, so still going there, and we get the idea. So uh, the filter is calibrated and verified to be working okay. So since we just looked at the filter envelope, let's now take a look at the VCA envelope. So uh, I've got oscillator A turned on, and I've got decay, sustain, and release down, so we'll be taking a look at attack. So we've got attack set at six, which should be about a one second attack. And that's pretty consistent from voice to voice. Now let's take a look at the decay. So at six, we should have about a one second decay. reasonably consistent from voice to voice. So now we're going to take a look at sustain. So we have sustain. We have the envelope completely closed now. So there's just the click of having hit the key. But uh, let's do the uh, sustain and let's, let's gradually turn it up. And we hear the volume increase consistently from voice to voice, so that's good. Let's do release, so we're going to turn release to about six, and uh, sustain on, so we'll get about a one second release. <laughs> that's good, and then with release cranked all the way up, it should be over 20 seconds. We're not going to sit and verify. So now we're going to be testing out the LFO and the wheel modulation. So uh, we've got a patch dialed up from the service manual. And basically, I'm going to verify that uh, some things do nothing. So, so that's good. When I turn those on and I'm not adjusting the wheel, there's no change in sound. Um, similarly, if I turn this on and I crank the wheel up, but I have no LFO selected, uh, it's not affecting the sound. So that's good. 
So let's turn on a triangle LFO and we'll test a wheel mod on for, for frequency A. Sorry, frequency A is for uh, frequency modulation to oscillator A. So that works. Uh, we can adjust the frequency. So the next thing we're going to test is the sawtooth LFO uh, to modulate frequency of oscillator A. And that works. So next we'll try the square wave. This is with oscillator B turned on. You can turn oscillator B off, and you can hear it a little more clearly. But it's it's interesting to have oscillator B turned on so you can hear the pitch, uh, how it's supposed to be as a reference for comparison. So we verified now that uh, all the LFO shapes work, the frequency uh, knob for the LFO works, and that the modulation to frequency of oscillator A works. So now we're going to check pulse width modulation to uh, oscillator A. So this is without. And you can hear that you can use that to get a nice sweeping uh, detuning of the pulse widths between the two oscillators. With oscillator B turned off, it sounds like this. Now we'll verify that the modulation wheel can modulate the filter. So I've changed it from pulse width to filter. like a champ. Similarly, we can use the wheel to modulate the frequency of oscillator B, so I turned oscillator A off now. So that's pul uh, frequency modulation. We can also do pulse width modulation. One last thing that we can do here with the uh, modulation wheel is we can modulate, instead of using the LFO, we can use noise. As our modulation source. And the last area to verify and calibrate is the polymod section. And it, this is another area like the filter that's not under CPU tuning control. So it, it fully relies on the trimmers and invariably it's not going to be correct when you first get to it. So first we're going to verify that just turning these things on doesn't create some offset on the sound. So this is what thing, the five voices sound like with these switches off. So that's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see with uh, frequency turned on frequency for oscillator A turned on. If we uh, crank this filter envelope knob, basically from one extreme to the other, the sound should be the same. So that's not too bad for the first voice. A little worse on the second voice. That third voice is pretty good. So uh, yeah, that's going to need calibration. The other thing that we're going to do is a similar test here with the oscillator B. So I'm going to test all five voices and I'm going to crank this knob from 0 to 10. And it should sound the same at, at both extremes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's 
not so good. Eh. And that one's pretty good. So basically we're going to go through and we're going to calibrate all five voices for, for both of these, these settings. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So to calibrate the filter envelope here, uh, we're clipping again onto a resistor here and we're going to be adjusting the trimmers this time, the same row of trimmer that we did for the filter, but uh, this time the ones with the uh, tabs pointing down is for the polymod filter envelope. So right now I have the filter envelope knob turned to zero and we're going to turn it up to 10 and it should stay zero. And as you see here, we're getting a little bit of an offset introduced, which we're going to correct with the trimmer here. So I'm going to clean some of this goop out of the trimmer so we can adjust it, and uh, we'll trim those out. As you can see, some of these have never been adjusted since it left, it left the factory back in 1981. So we just adjust this for as close to zero volts as possible. Again, it's a very sensitive trimmer, so it's not possible to get it exactly on the nose, but it's definitely possible to make a huge improvement over to how it was. There we go. That's pretty darn good. So I'll turn the knob back down to zero. And now there's very little offset there. So we're going to repeat this for all five voices. And the procedure to trim out the oscillator B adjustment is very similar. You're actually clipped to the same resistor that you're clipped to for the uh, filter envelope. And here what we'll do is we'll adjust the oscillator B knob so you can see that there's some offset and we're going to trim that out to zero volts. And the trimmers that we use are these ones here. They're labeled P mod oscillator balance. You can see one of them has been touched, but four of them haven't been touched since the synthesizer was new. So we're going to clean some of the goop off and calibrate those the same way we did the last ones. So now we'll verify those calibrations that we made. So first we'll check the filter envelope adjustment that we made. It's not perfect, don't forget you don't have control over what happens in the mid-range, but from endpoint to endpoint it's, it's pretty good. So we'll check oscillator B. And that sounds just perfect. So the calibration was a success and we can move on and just functional test this area and uh, then that'll wrap things up. So we're going to test first uh, the filter envelope modulation. So to do that, we're going to turn something on on oscillator B, and I set a uh, medium filter decay. So as we add this, we should hear some modulation. So you can see as we adjust the filter envelope up, we get more of the effect. And so that is working. So now we'll test modulating that by oscillator B. So with it, it's set at zero, there's, there's no modulation. And that works. So now we've uh, verified that the uh, polymod works for frequency of oscillator A. Let's try modulating the pulse width of oscillator A. So I'll turn the uh, pulse width to a narrower pulse and uh, we will try so again I have a, a filter decay set mid-range so with no filter envelope modulating it there's no like descending sweep effect but as I turn it up get kind of a descending pulse width sweep there. Uh, we can modulate that by oscillator B. So this is without any modulation. So uh, pulse width modulation works for this section, both by 
the filter envelope and by oscillator B. And we can move on to the next item, which is the filter. So I've turned on filter and I've turned off oscillator A. I've lowered the cutoff frequency and I've jacked up the resonance. So I have uh, self-oscillating type sounds. Now if I add in a uh, polymod filter by filter envelope, I get it sweeping the, uh, the frequency of the filter down to the note that I play. So. So that works, and um, we can modify it by uh, uh, modulate it by oscillator B. And that sounds kind of cool. Almost like a ring modulator sound. But it works, and that's the last of the functional tests from the service manual for the Prophet 5. So in this video, we've gone through and we have verified that everything is working on this Prophet 5, you know, within, in respect to the uh, audio path. We've calibrated uh, all the things that needed calibration, which on a Prophet 5 are typically just the filter and the uh, polymod section. And uh, we verified that this is ready to go. So there's a few more things I'm going to be doing in this Prophet 5, and then it'll be on its way to its new home. Uh, but I hope you found this helpful. Um, you can use it to verify if your Prophet 5 is in tune and calibrated properly. And if it's not, you now know what to do to, to get it sounding right. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.